It's October 2007. I'm on my way into the office at my corporate job building data infrastructure for a tech company. I'm on the I-5 heading south, not too far from the ocean, and it looks foggy out, but there was no fog in the forecast that day. October, if you don't know, is one of our best months here in San Diego, so it's strange that the weather wouldn't be perfect, essentially, like it usually is. It turns out it's not fog. It's smoke from several devastating wildfires that had dusted up recently. I pulled over to grab a coffee and check the news, only to find that two of the three major wildfires burning out east in East County, San Diego, merged and are now uncontrollable. This was the start of the fall 2007 California firestorm. About 30 fires around Southern California wreaked havoc across San Diego and LA counties primarily. When it was all said and done, the fires destroyed over 1,500 homes, burned almost 1 million acres, which for perspective is about 20 times the size of Chicago or 30 times the size of Paris. Paris, France, not Texas. So what caused this? Where did it all come from? Why did this happen? Well, for San Diego, anyways, the investigators determined that SDG&E, the gas and electric company there, was negligent, failing to trim vegetation and safely manage its power lines. The California Public Utilities Commission, or the CPUC, ruled that SDG&E and its shareholders, not ratepayers, must absorb the roughly $379 million in fire-related costs. Now, those costs are after the insurance covered billions worth of damage to homes and buildings all around the region. And since then, prices for SCG&E have been some of the highest in the nation and only continue to rise despite record profits for their shareholders. Yeah, not good. But the point of the story is to highlight just how fragile our aging grid has become and how ill-equipped it is to deal with climate change that's already here. Severe drought, high winds, high temperatures, combined with this aging grid infrastructure is a terrifying combination. One that is costing us billions of dollars, along with, of course, the tragic loss of life. So what can we do? Is there any solution here? Well, this is where a 225-year-old piece of tech comes into the story as our unlikely hero. Yes, I'm, I'm talking about the simple battery, one of these little guys here. Something that I know we're all familiar with, but in my view, completely undervalue in today's world. And despite originally being invented by an Italian chemist over 225 years ago, batteries have really started to take over the world in these past few decades. And if you asked me when I was a kid rocking my Game Boy that the things powering it would one day power my car and take my family on long thousand mile road trips across the country, I wouldn't have believed you. I mean, for one, because I wouldn't have imagined having a family at that age, but also because it just seemed insane that a little battery could, you know, power a car. And beyond that, these little guys are now powering cities. Now, if you followed me for any amount of time, you'd undoubtedly seen my videos talking about home batteries that protect my family from these blackouts, all while saving us money. And that is something that really helps me and my family sleep easy at night. Now, another thing that helps me sleep better at night is today's sponsor. How's that segue for you, huh? Okay, bear with me. This is actually really cool. When I was searching for a new mattress recently, I wanted something cooling, comfortable, and supportive for my back, especially since I'm a side sleeper with, you know, another person in the bed. So I chose the NOLA Evolution Luxury Firm mattress, and I'm so glad I did. I've actually had this for about two weeks already, and it's truly improved my sleep. I fall asleep faster, I wake up refreshed, and the cooling technology keeps me comfortable. And that's really something that's been a big deal for me because I've always sort of run hot at night, and this does actually help with that. Plus, these NOLA mattresses are made to order at their facility in Arizona, where I'm from, so I'm kind of supporting my hometown in a way. They do their own coiling, foam pouring, foam cutting, lamination, and everything in-house, basically, ensuring that there's quality at every step. With free shipping straight to your door in the U.S. and 120-night sleep trial, NOLA makes upgrading your sleep easy and risk-free. Plus, they have a limited lifetime warranty to help you sleep easy later on. And this setup is kind of wild. As I mentioned, they ship it straight to your door, then you unbox it, place it on your bed's base, carefully, and I stress carefully, cut the plastic wrap around it with scissors and sit back and revel in your accomplishment. And 
kind of like you did something that day. Congratulations. And if I didn't get one myself, I kind of wouldn't believe it. So it does really make it just super simple for shopping for a mattress, which normally for me would be, you know, one of my lowest favorite tasks. It wouldn't be something I was ever looking forward to, but the way Nola does it, I really enjoyed. So I do love this and I think you will too. So if you're ready for better sleep, visit nolamattress.com slash bensolens to get an extra $50 off your new mattress or scan the QR code on the screen now. Now let's get back to that crazy story about how batteries are taking over the world. And for my dollar, I'm not sure that there's another piece of tech that has impacted the world as much as batteries have in the 40 plus years that I've been alive. I mean, there's some contenders out there, but really batteries are in everything nowadays and completely changing the world as we know it. I mean, major industries are completely shifting because of these little guys. But is this the end? Can it get any better? And where does it go from here? Well, the latest report from the IEA shows that in 2024, as electric car sales rose by 25% to 17 million, annual battery demand surpassed one terawatt hour, a historic milestone. At the same time, the average price of a battery pack for a battery electric car dropped below $100 USD per kilowatt hour, commonly thought of as a key threshold for competing on cost with conventional models. And to me, this is sort of reminiscent of how the internet began to just eat all the industries that it touched once it became powerful enough and sort of ubiquitous. Similarly, batteries are replacing fossil fuels in nearly every capacity in our world today. Now, of course, EVs are more popular than ever. I mean, they're all around us and they're growing super fast in terms of taking market share. They're growing so fast that, in fact, in 2017, we saw peak combustible vehicle sales. Since 2017, the combustible form of transportation has been on an absolute decline, whereas electrified forms have been doing nothing but growing year over year. And of course, in the consumer electronics space, batteries are crucial. Everything in the past, I don't know, five, 10 years have this smart feature that connects them to the internet. And that is almost exclusively because they can have their own battery maintaining that connection. So if your fridge, you know, drops below a certain temperature, maybe something's going on, you can get a notice or you can control the, the air conditioning in your house. Whatever it may be, batteries are at the heart of all of these smart devices that we have that power our lives. But the big one, the, the biggest use of batteries now that I'm most impressed with is batteries that are replacing fossil fuels on the energy grid. Now, what I learned about during this process is that the grid is in a constant balancing act that requires the voltage itself to remain constant across everything plugged into it. And if that gets off even for a split second, it can go south really quick. This is what happened in Spain recently. In April 2025, Spain and Portugal, the peninsula as it's known, had their worst blackout in history, leaving nearly 50 million people without electricity. A few months later, the investigation showed that it was the conventional power plants that failed, causing voltage disruptions, which then had a cascading effect over the entire grid on the peninsula. And as the report pointed out, had conventional power plants done their job in controlling the voltage, there would have been no blackout. So like tripping the circuit breaker on your hairdryer if you're using it in the morning, the grid itself has these protections built in. So if the voltage ever deviates slightly from what it's expecting, things will just shut off. And if too many of those shut off, it creates sort of a cascade effect. And that's essentially what happened here. And honestly, the, the circuit breakers that are at these substations that actually you know make the voltage go up and down to maintain that, they look basically just like the ones you have at your house. So if you're imagining like a giant circuit breaker, that's, that's essentially what it is. And of course, the solution to all these problems is our hero, this little battery right here, this little guy. You know, obviously a lot of these connected together, but essentially the base technology within the same thing that powered my Game Boy as a kid is what is now helping the grids be more resilient and deal with the challenges of climate change. And back home here in San Diego, the company that was found negligent of causing all of those outages because they didn't maintain their power lines, they're adding batteries too. 
Just this past March in 2025, SCG&E announced that they added 100 megawatts of storage to their existing facility, bringing the total to over 200 megawatts. And this is just one of their projects. But the CEO said that the expansion of West Side Canal is a crucial step forward, strengthening our region's energy resiliency and advancing California's clean energy goals. That's Caroline Wynn, the CEO of SCG&E. And the reason they're adding these comes down to how the grid was originally designed. As one economist put it, the grid that we have wasn't designed for what we do with it now, let alone what we want to do with it with all sorts of renewables. And this is where batteries really shine. As the grid shifts to more renewable energy that is being mostly intermittent on in its nature, meaning you know the sun doesn't always shine, the wind doesn't always blow kind of a thing, we need more and more batteries to keep things flowing smoothly. But there's also a recent shift in battery chemistry that could be a step change in development, making them even cheaper and more resilient than the current king of battery chemistries. So to learn more about this, I called my friend and local battery expert, Matt Farrell. The stuff that's really got my attention at the moment is all usually it's about the, the big players, so like CATL in China. Um, they're, they're betting big on sodium ion technology, and they're building out massive factories to pump these things out at a rate that's kind of shocking. Um, and one of their more recent claims, and I'm going to put this like sodium ion batteries, take it with a grain of salt joke here. <laughs> um, they're claiming something like $15 per kilowatt hour for a battery pack that's in delivery vans right now. L like like um, uh, installed, not just like the cell. Cor correct. The, the pack, like the wow. per kilowatt hour pack is supposed to be $15. Per kilowatt hour. I don't know hour. if that's true or not. But like, even if it's remotely close to that, that is shocking how cheap they are going to be making these batteries for. Yeah. Um, and that's yeah. CATL, right? That's CATL. So it's kind of like, man, the number of comp these big companies that are looking at sodium, which it's understandable why it's a abundant, cheap materials for batteries. The big knock to them is that they don't have as much energy density as right. like a nickel mang manganese cobalt battery mm -hmm. but if you're building a delivery van that needs 150 miles of range that's whatever quite, who cares it, it'll work i mean think about grid storage you don't care about the weight so it's like you can make a massive battery pack that's super cheap yeah so it's 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 really surprising how fast the battery prices not just over the past 20 years but even just in the past like five years seem to be yeah. like falling off a cliff and the other aspect of that is just like i know you know this but like remember when tesla was starting to ramp up on model three and they couldn't build them fast enough because they couldn't get enough supply of batteries coming in right because the world's production of batteries was behind so you know the demand was outstripping supply the manufacturing mm -hmm. we flipped that the world now can produce more batteries than demand it's like it's over three like ter terawatt hours a year we can produce worldwide wow but we only need something like 1.8 or yeah. two so it's like mm. there's too many there's too much capacity right now which is part of the reason why costs are dropping like a rock. Now, if you want to see the full interview with Matt, check the members only feed if you're a member. And if you're not, just check out the join button down below to look at options and maybe support the channel and become a member and go backstage with all the rest of us. So we've got cheaper, more reliable batteries charged to completely shift the energy mix around the world, giving us cleaner air, cleaner water, along with less blackouts. Well done, little battery that uh, powered my Game Boy when I was a kid. I never knew you had it in you. Now, not for nothing, uh, many experts are predicting that we're actually going to be approaching that peak oil period sometime soon, so batteries are going to play an even bigger role in our energy transition. But to learn more about that, you have to go check out this video over here, breaking down what we know and what the experts are predicting when it comes to the future of oil and oil production. That's it for this one, guys. As I mentioned, if you're not a member yet, check out the join button down below. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments, and I'll see you back here next time.